but let's, I just want to make it as clear as I possibly can here. Uh, and, and just give a profile of what it means to be a forerunner. What does it mean for us to say yes, like Mary did, to say yes, like Anna did, to say yes, like John the Baptist did, and be a part of history and be a part of Jesus's second coming? How do we prepare the way? How do we become forerunners? Isaiah 40 verse 3 uh, is one of the prophecies that was quoted from the Old Testament and applied to John the Baptist, which I read a few minutes ago. It says, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And I believe this is in many ways the job description of a forerunner. So forerunners are forged in the wilderness, forged in the wilderness of prayer and fasting. So that's the first thing, prayer and fasting. Forerunners engage in prayer and fasting. The wilderness in scripture, uh, describes a challenging season. It it describes a season of preparation before coming fully into your destiny. So David, you know, was chased around in the wilderness while Saul was trying to kill him before he became king. Israel had to wander around in the wilderness before they were able to enter into the promised land. These kinds of stories are throughout the scriptures. And so the wilderness is a place of preparation. Uh, The wilderness creates humility and dependence. So if God's called us to be forerunners, he's calling us into the wilderness, uh, which can be challenging. It can be humbling. It, it's, a, it's a place of becoming dependent upon God. Um, and, and, and in order to be prepared, us to be prepared to engage in God's purposes and to be used by him, uh, he's saying, come away with me to the wilderness. The, the wilderness is a place of prayer. It's like the secret place Jesus talked about, the place of hiddenness. Uh, it's, it's a place of fasting. So Jesus, you know, before he began his ministry, he had a wilderness experience for 40 days where he went into the wilderness and he prayed and fasted in Matthew chapter 4. Um, Song of Solomon 8.5 uh, describes the, the, the woman uh, coming out of the wilderness, leaning on her beloved. Uh, so the bride is leaning on her beloved, and it's a picture of the church. It's a picture of us trusting in Jesus, our beloved one, our bridegroom. And so the wilderness is a place where we cultivate trust and intimacy with God, dependence upon God. It's the secret place. It's a place of prayer, uh, the place of fasting. And so forerunners are forged in the wilderness. Now, Forerunners are voices also, uh, but forerunner, those voices are forged in the wilderness. The voice cries in the wilderness. That is the context of the forerunner message, messengers, the forerunner voices, those who proclaim the rec- return of Jesus, who proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God, those that God's going to use to prepare the way for his second coming. They're first and foremost, they're uh, people of intimacy with God. They've They've been forged in hard places. They've been forged in hiddenness. They've been broken of this uh, selfish pursuit of ambition and a name and a brand. And they've been humbled uh, in the presence of God in the, in the secret places with the Lord. Now, forerunners do emerge from this wilderness, though, with a voice, with a clear message, with a prophetic sound. Forerunners are uh, prophetic messengers. The fact that they're prophetic means that they're visionaries. They see what God wants to do. They know the word of God. They've studied the scriptures. They've, they've studied God's prophetic promises in the word. They're, they're tuned to the Holy Spirit. Um, they, they're pioneers because they see what's not yet. They're forerunners. They forge the way. They prepare the way. They're presence pioneers, right? They see and declare what's yet to come. What other people don't see, forerunners are already seeing it happen. So they're, they're prophetic and they're speaking it and declaring it and they're praying it. And so most people, they either tend to like the wilderness of prayer and fasting or they want to be a voice, a prophetic voice to preach and to prophesy. And And sometimes people try to skip the wilderness and go ahead and preach and prophesy. uh, And there's not authority on their message because they haven't been forged in the wilderness. But a true forerunner is a voice crying out in the wilderness. Some people get in the wilderness and they don't want to leave and they never become a voice. But if you really press into the heart of God, you're going to emerge from the place of prayer and fasting and intimacy with the Lord. And you're going to have a word in your heart and you're going to be able to proclaim with boldness 
uh, God's purposes and his plans and what he's done, who he is and what he is going to do. And so that's the heart of a forerunner is it's, is it's a voice crying out in the wilderness, uh, living in that tension, rooted in int- intimacy with Jesus in the, in the hidden place, in the secret place, but also boldly proclaiming to the culture and to the broken world, uh, who God is and what he's doing and that he's coming again. And so because they're in that tension, because forerunners are in that, uh, both, both and dynamic where they're in the, in the wilderness, but they're also proclaiming to the world, uh, forerunners are intercessors. That's number three. Forerunners are forged in the wilderness of fasting and prayer. Number one, number two, forerunners are a prophetic voice proclaiming who God is. Number three, forerunners are intercessors. They're those who stand in the gap between heaven and earth, and they practice the ministry of reconciliation. They're praying God's purposes, and they're they're bringing people to Jesus. They're intercessors. All right, so guys, God is preparing his bride for his return, and before he returns, the church will be in partnership with him and his purposes. In the spirit and power of Elijah, the body of Christ, we're going to be praying and fasting day and night, declaring the gospel with boldness and power to every nation. This is what's going to lead to the second coming of Jesus and the full establishment of God's kingdom on the earth. And that's what God's inviting us to. And so as we celebrate uh, the fact that Jesus has come, let's also remember that he did that Uh, in the context of forerunners who are agreeing with his purposes and preparing the way for all that he wanted to do. And remember that Jesus is coming again. And I encourage you, I urge you to say yes to Jesus, to to step into your calling uh, as a forerunner. I encourage you to, to, to go to the wilderness, go to the wilderness of prayer and fasting so that you can emerge with a voice of clarity and authority right now in the midst of the craziness that's happening in the earth because God always brings heaven to earth in partnership with humanity.